About a year and a half ago, I had this urge to tell a different kind of story. Mostly I tell fantasies, and I've always been interested in stories that told about the history of America through the lives of interesting characters. And I remember reading about the first person who went over the Niagara Falls in a barrel. The most interesting thing about this person was that it was a woman. She was fairly old, 62, and she was the first person to go over the falls in a barrel and live. Pretty quickly, I was getting involved in a project that was different for me. Not only was it going to be a biography and based on specific facts of someone's life, it was also a period piece, it took place in 1901. I knew that I was going to be dealing with a text that put some different demands on me as an illustrator. I like the worlds that I make through the illustration, through the text, to be recognizable but I like at least one thing to be unrecognizable or at least uh, unexpected. The notion that you can be visited by an extraordinary event in a familiar reality is much more compelling because that's where most of us live. Then the possibility that something fabulous or fantastic can happen is more exciting. And so I've sort of embraced it as a story model. In the places I've imagined, it's possible for a train to pull up in front of your house. It's possible for a game board to come to life. It's possible for a mesmerizing stone to turn you into an ape. There are all sorts of things that can happen. We're on the third floor of my house. Short commute from my bedroom to my place of work. I have some of the things that I've built over the years up here. This is a model of a carousel which is actually in uh, Vienna. One of the reasons I keep this in my studio is because I built it here and it's too big to leave. Can't get down the stairs. So this, this will have to stay with the house, I guess. I see my work as different from title to title, and I actually in some ways strive for that. Sometimes I've worked in color, sometimes I've worked in black and white. And it's not arbitrary. In some books where I've chosen to do them in color, it's been because of the subject matter I imagine I will draw. And sometimes I see things in color rather than black and white. With The Queen of the Falls, I was interested in exploring some new materials. And there were a couple of things that motivated me to choose the materials I chose. One of them was the fact that I knew that there would be a couple of images of foamy water. I thought it might be advantageous to use a paper which has a tonality of its own, in this case, a warm gray, so that I could draw the frothy parts of the water by using a white pencil on the toned paper, and then other parts of the image by using a black pencil on the toned paper. I've never used the same materials in each book. I've always used different papers, different pencils. The reason I do this is to keep the process interesting because if I'm using something new, then I'm learning something and learning things is very exciting.